Well, welcome back to the Sean Trey Show. I've got an awesome guest with me today. Now, I'm just going to tell people who you are and uh, what you do. My name is Miles Dasher. I'm a professional parachutist. Um, I just like to fly, um, see what's possible for the human body in the sky. That's awesome. That's awesome. How, 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 did, how did you start down that path, man? Like You know, I just kind of fell into it. Um, I was, yeah, <laughs> I was like, that, that was well played there. I need a drummer in here, man. That's awesome. I've heard this one before. No, I, right. I uh, you know, my dad was in the Air Force um, my mm. whole childhood, and so I've been really surrounded by aviation, by flying, and jets in particular. And, That's awesome. And then, yeah, um, he told me to go to college, um, uh, get a degree go to the Air Force Academy, learn to fly jets, you know, and I was like, cool, that sounds awesome, but I don't want to kill anybody, and, you know, most jets <laughs> fly around and drop bombs and shoot and stuff, and I'm like, so I didn't do it, I didn't listen to my dad, now I'm kicking myself, because, dude, jet pilots, they got it going on, they're flying, right. like, some heavy-duty equipment, and it's just amazing, but um, what I can, did Can do, I stop here a second? What, what, did, what did your dad fly? Oh, man, my dad flew, um, well, he started out, like, uh, T-38s. Um, yeah, flew F fours. Um, he flew awesome. U uh, two spy plane, and what? Uh, started what? ended up KC one thirty five. So now he just flies for wow. fun for himself in Cessnas. That's that kind awesome. Of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. He was up in space, you know, like yeah, seventy thousand right? feet in a spacesuit, you know, peeing into a bottle and just like hanging out for for um, for like for. Oh my gosh! I think he he flew for like seventy two hours once. <laughs> it's ridiculous. What? Yeah. How, how, yeah. That's that's not. You gotta sleep, you know, and then they wake you up, yeah. and you're like, huh? Oh yeah, I'm in space. It's cool. You can just I'm, take a nap. <laughs> that's wild. That's yeah. so wild. But I mean, that's awesome. Like my my uncle is a pilot, and he flies. He flew for American Airlines for a long time, but he started out in you know T-38s, and then flew F-4s, and then he moved into they had him flying C-130s. Yep. In and out of Okinawa. Yeah, Okinawa I lived in Okinawa. Okinawa. That's where he was flying. My, yeah. He would fly from Okinawa to Da Nang and then uh, in Vietnam in, in the 70s and then fly back up. Yeah, yeah we, we're lucky. We get to go travel around the world and go see the place, you know. And every like two to four years, we would move to another place and sometimes another country and lived in Okinawa, Japan back in the 80s. It was awesome. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> 80s too. That's that's height. That's that's peak. You know, you got Top Gun coming out, and you're around fighter <laughs> yeah. jets. Like, yeah, awesome. it was pretty epic. I learned judo there, and yeah, as a kid, I just um, was always playing, and um, gymnastics was big for me. And I took judo while in Okinawa, and uh, I would always be at the swimming pool, hanging out of the diving board, and jumping off the high dive, and. Um, yeah, in judo, I, I wanted to make a movie when I was a kid, and I wrote like a, a screenplay a script for. Um, it was a stunt movie because I started. I watched Hooper once, you know, with. Uh, oh nice. Um, oh my god, and I was Burt Reynolds, and uh, I was always I was wanting to be a stunt man when I was a little kid, and I would like jump off the roof of the house. I had a bunch of nets in my tree out front. I practiced jumping and landing on my back, and you know, high falling into them, and and. Um, and, and yeah, just learning how to, um, just be a kid and jumping big wheels off of the three hills in the backyard, catching air and then <laughs> landing in the transition and that kind of thing. And, and riding bikes was big. I had a BMX bike and, um, we just, we'd built this half pipe wake and, um, just go launching into the sky and learn how tough our shins are when the free wheel comes spinning back around, whap, right, right in the shin. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, just, uh, I always wanted to, um, be a stunt man when I was a little kid. And then uh, went to school to be a PE teacher, and because um, I figured that was my favorite subject. You know, I love sports. That's kind of my big thing. And um, yeah. I was always super athletic, and um, used to run because my name was Miles Dasher. So you know, had to run track and um, had the school record in the mile. Um, That's awesome. For about a week before Billy Flanders, he's so fast. <laughs> um, he beat me, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, athletics was always important to me, so I went to college to be a PE teacher, and then um, graduated college, uh, moved to Squaw Valley, and started skiing, then didn't want to be a PE teacher anymore, and wanted to be a skydiver, and then I just kind of fell into it one day when my, I, I moved into a house um, where my friend uh, Jim Fritch, bungee jumper, um, lived, and a bunch of other guys, we, we formed up um, 
it was Primal Instinct Bungee Jumping Company, and we would go out and set up bungee jumps on train bridges in the middle of the night on full moons type thing. And one of my roommates, Frank and Bali, was a skydiver. And uh, I'm like, dude, where do you do that? I want to skydive. When I was eight years old, I saw a guy land a parachute um, in Ohio. We were playing soccer. And this dude just comes flying in on the 4th of July with a big smoke bomb on his foot and everything. And we're like, oh, that's awesome. I want to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. You know, I said that when I was eight. And it didn't happen until I was 25. And, uh, but sure enough, it happened, you know, and, uh, that's the thing is you got to make it happen. Otherwise, otherwise you could just want it, you know, you could want to do yep. anything, but <clears throat> until you go out and you go after it and achieve it yourself, then it happened, you know? Yep. And, um, yeah, skydove for a couple of years before I started base jumping, even though my friends were, when are you going to base jump? Cause Frank's a big base jumper, blah, 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 blah. I'm all, that's dangerous, dude. You could die doing that. I want to live long life. You know, I got like good genes, but my grandma was 90, you know, and, and um, her great grandma was 90 and everybody in my family is over 80 and that kind of thing. And that's, that's kind of my goal is to live to be 80 years old. So now I got to be careful in these sports that are very dangerous. So, yeah, I just started base jumping from there. And now I'm over 6,235 jumps. I have 6,236 wow. jumps. Nice, man. That's amazing. <laughs> and it's like, that's, that's. That's wild, and, and it's interesting because you you put you, you hit on a couple things, right? I I I um I have a daughter that's five, and and right now I'm actually in the process of reevaluating kind of where we want to raise her, because you know it, it's it's really this city is so congested, and there's no place for kids to play, so she's always inside the house, and there's yeah. not a lot of, of, of play, space to play, you know, I mean, granted, we, we, we put together, you know, we did the best we could to kind of create a safe space, but especially now with, with what happened with COVID, it's like, yeah. it's very evident, like that there is, there's, there's, there's ways that we played when we were kids, you know I mean? I was out like, dude, we were making like what you just, just, just described. Go. The, my yeah, mom, it was the my best advice too. she gave me was go outside and play. Yeah, exactly. And you're out there. We were building stuff, you know, digging yeah. in, in like in mud forts and, and like we were out catching, you know, lizards and rattlesnakes and stuff. Yeah. Not recommending that my kids go catch rattlesnakes because, you know, but like at the same Bring time. Bring a shovel. Cuts head exactly. off. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's ways to do yeah. everything, you know. Yeah. Is, there is. And, and like, <laughs> so we were, we were out there wild and like, and it was awesome and it was experiential and it was just so, so, so really like you were living and, and granted, you know, there was always that fine line, <laughs> that fine line that you walked with like too wild and, and just, you know, and it was fun, but you learned it. You learned it. You won't know that fine line until you go out there and tickle it a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> and, and like you start going, whoa, that's a little bit too much. And you correct yourself. But people that don't have that experience, they either live in – good example. I um, I remember seeing – um, uh, there are some people who are so – you feel safe. We always feel safe. And when you feel safe, you, you, you might go and smack a bear or something because you've always been safe and you don't realize, dude, you don't smack a grizzly bear. You don't, you don't do that. You know what I mean? I'm your stupid bear. I'm so tough. And then the bear is like, let's show you the primal force of a bear. You know, <laughs> like, Oh my gosh, you know? And, and I think that that's what I think people who, who are so grow up in too much safety, there is that lack of understanding. You ever see the, there's one page that I follow on, on Instagram. Nature is metal. Have you seen that page before? Uh, no, not that one. It's yeah. brutal. It's brutal. It's like, it's just all like nature animals just kind of destroying other animals. And it's like, it's like, I don't watch it like, you know, like, Oh yeah, this is, this is awesome. It just is a reminder. And the person runs the channel as like, it's like, this is a lion. This is a lion taken out a gazelle. Like, you know, and yeah. it's like, and it was, it's just like, this is a reminder of how hardcore nature is. And yeah. like, and you have this awareness and this respect for it that you have to have. And yeah. it's not fear. It's not fear. It's respect. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you respect gravity. 
You're not yeah. scared of it. Yeah. But you respect it. Yeah. I've learned a little bit about how it works, how it slowly picks up as you're falling. It's not just like, you know, like Wile E. Coyote type thing. It's like more like yeah. you jump and then you start falling and then you pick up speed. And then as you go, you gradually get airspeed, 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 airspeed. Now you're going terminal velocity. You know, it takes about 10 seconds to get there, you know, and uh, you need something big if you're going to get terminal velocity. But yeah, you're right. It, it, and it's what you're accustomed to and what you, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you, some people are pokers who go out and poke at things, you know, like they go yeah. out and they'll slap a bear and they might have to learn the hard way. And some people might not be around their whole life. Well, I mean, their life might be shortened because of some of the things that they go out and poke, you know? Yep. But if you pay attention, you'll learn how to, how to smack a bear on the way by where you can like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out, you know, <laughs> and the, there's ways to almost do everything. And, and, yep. uh, you know, if you figure it out and think outside the box, you'll get creative and, and figure out ways to do whatever it is that you want to do. And I, I attribute that to playing Legos as a kid and like just being right. creative and, and learning how to like make things out of like, look at these blocks. If I put them together like this, I can make a bear or I can make whatever I want, a spaceship, that kind of thing, you know. And uh, my big thing was spaceships. I always want to go to space, yeah. you know, the moon because I mean – I mean, I'm dating myself here. I was born in 69. I watched the landing on the moon. Don't remember it. <clears throat> my mom keeps telling me all about it. But so that was kind of a big thing in my life is like, what men been walking on the moon? What? Yeah. yeah right. When you were born, that started happening. I'm like, Oh wow. Right. right. When I was born, that happened. Huh? All right. Well, let's see what we could do now. You know, and I would love to walk on the moon and I would, I would not just walk on it. I would love to jump on the moon and find right. a big old crater to jump and whoa, see what kind of free fall maximum velocity you can get there and how you could slow that down and survive it. Right. That's awesome, man. <laughs> and that's, that, no, to me, that's like, that's fascinating. And I, I'm with you, man. And it's like, there, there is, someone once asked me, like, if I would want to live forever, right? Like, like, be, you know, infinity. And I was like, yes, not because I'm scared of death, because I want the chance to find out and try anything yeah. that's possible. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There, there, there was uh, that new Ryan Reynolds movie, Free, Free Guy. That came out, oh, I haven't and seen that uh, one yet. I, I won't give anything away. But okay. there's like he's he's a character in a game, right? And and that that's the the main premise is he's he's you know he's he's a, an NPC in this game. One of the things too, like there's a certain point where the character is you know it, people, the character can do anything because you know you're a video game character. Or, think about another good example. Take it away from the, that one. Groundhog Day, Bill Murray. Oh yeah, he can't see that one over. And over, and over. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to see it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and and with that movie, you know, Bill Murray's character, like in the beginning, he's just like, oh, like so eventually, he's like, well, let's explore the world, and like that's like that's what I'm like all about, man. It's yeah. like let's try shit, let's try shit, yeah. and think about it. There was the first person that said, hey, let's jump out of an airplane and see if a sheet can slow us down. Yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah. I think it was goes way back even before airplanes, you know, people were jumping right. off of towers and mountains and like I have the feathers, the golden feathers and they'll fly, right. you know, and uh people were trying with wings and making sticks yeah. with wings glued on there or whatever, mm-hmm. rubber banded on there or whatever they had. <laughs> and uh people weren't making it, you know. <laughs> and then <laughs> finally it started happening and I think it was a lady who first survived it you know and uh yeah. sent it off of a um off of a tower with silk parachute and then and then another lady sent it out of a balloon and they never get credit for it you know but um you know they made it and they figured it out a little bit and they helped us um you know learn to figure out technology to where it is now and and i think right now we're so lucky because we are seeing technology advance at such an age or such a speed that yep. it's anything's possible. Of course it is, yeah. you know, planet earth, you could do almost anything here, but I think that just, that just kind of lacks your imagination though, too, because nobody can really think of like what's possible. You know, there's things that nobody can even possibly think that are possible yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're just playing with stuff that we know and understand and things that we've already exactly. seen, you know. And then there's things that you haven't seen and, you know, hey, what about that? No one talks about that. No one even knows about that, you know. So, yeah, it's – and he has to just kind of like 
learn these new things before you start to adapt and evolve to um, understand and learn how to manipulate them really right well, that's that was that was some i was talking to someone about that recently like this idea that we we operate inside of our box yeah because because it's a box that everyone understands yeah you know it, 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 we were talking yeah. Exactly. Someone <laughs> yeah. was just talking to me about like augmented reality, you know, and how people are and how it's going to kind of overlay. And I was like, it, and we were like, we were just like, we can't even process it. Why? Because it's not, it, it, it go, imagine going back to our parents in the 60s and saying, all right, there is going to be this thing called the internet. Yeah. And you can go there for, un, and, you know, and, like even schools yeah. now, like schools have gone the way of the dinosaur. Like, all the learning, I think in, in 20 years, by the time my daughter gets to college age, college is going to be entirely remote. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Here, it's like, which chip do you want to buy and put it into your head? You know? Yeah. Yep. Psh, bling. I'm enlightened. Yeah. You're not enlightened. I know you Kung Fu. Something that's something just send in your synapses and we'll see the whole right? process works like this. You know? <laughs> exactly. Right? I mean, when I was a kid, we had technology. We had phones. They were rotary. They were plugged into a wall. Right? And then when I was a teenager, all of a sudden now, like, oh, this one, you could walk around the house, <laughs> but don't go next door because it won't, you know. And now yeah. it's just like, oh, yeah, put a head Bluetooth in. People are talking to themselves on trains, you know, and everyone's like, who's that guy talking to? <laughs> Right. No, it, 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 it's, it's insane. The level, I mean, and that's what I was talking to someone about. Like we don't realize a lot of people don't realize that a hundred years ago, people were bloodletting. Yeah, they're starting to get cars. Yeah. Bloodletting and riding horses. Still a ton Put of people. The majority on of people yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, 1900 people were riding horses and yeah, oh they yeah. were, you know, if no antibiotics. Lucky. If they were lucky, yeah. you know, people were walking or took the train, yeah. like, you know, and it, it's crazy the level of, of, of advancement that we have. And, and like, this is one of the things like I, I see with, you know, I'm just, I'm absolutely fascinated by a couple areas. Like, first of all, base jumping, of course, but, you know, wingsuit flying, all of these, these, these arts, because, you know, it used to be, you know, I mean, the, the you know, when, when, when my, 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 my uncle was in there and they would have like the parachutes were much more rudimentary you know what i mean it was just the big bell and yeah. you know they kind of just they kind of just went down yep. but then now man yeah. the stuff that people can do yeah it's you know the precision flying is insane yeah that you guys like, are doing. it didn't really even happen until like the 70s you know when they started flying conical canopies it was it was round parachutes and everyone thought they went straight down, but they did have vents in them, so they drifted. And you actually, they, the round parachutes, they don't go straight down. They drift at a one-to-one -one glide ratio, so it's like a 45-degree angle. Every foot you drop, you do a foot forward. That's a one-to-one -one angle. And you're doing a 45, and you're basically steering yourself where you want to go. So when you land those, make sure you're facing into the wind, and you won't break your leg. Everyone's like, oh, everyone breaks their legs. Well, they were landing downwind, and they had all that, that speed across the ground into their impact. You know, if you put it oh, into the wind and you slow down your, your downward speed and forward, you can't slow down your downward speed, but you can slow down your forward speed and then get your PLF on with the round canopies, you know? And then all of a sudden now, boom, it's, it's like they shaped it a little bit so it glid a little bit better. And then mm -hmm. now um, it's a ram air canopy with holes in the front and it just rams into the, the air. It's going forward so the air's ramming into it and inflating the wing and keeping it pressurized. And now you have a pressurized wing that you're hanging, hanging and suspended from. And now you you got lines on the back control lines that you're pulling down with your toggles you could like – deflect the air and like just create drag and like make it turn and spin and then and then at the end you give it the old whoa and pull both of them down and whoop, stall the wing out just like a like a like a pair like a like an airplane does when it comes in the land it like flaps, yeah. floats it up and it stalls it to its slowest speed possible and then lands and then you yeah. have the least interaction with the ground you know it's like Oh, that's as slow as we can go, and and that's where judo comes in, because like, yeah, you're even sometimes when you slow it down, the slowest you can make it, 
you're going to need to do a good PLF because the wind conditions are this or that. And, um, and that canopy flies at this much forward speed, depending on its size and your, how heavily you load it up and wing load it, you know? And, um, and the thing is when you skydive, everybody wants to downsize their wings and get smaller and smaller and smaller. So they're going faster and faster across the ground and uh, faster through the sky, more power, more speed, more power. But then more power comes more responsibility, you know, just like Spider-Man said. And it's true when you're skydiving with a smaller wing and uh, all of a sudden you're coming in hot and you're like, oh, my God, I can't run this out. You know, now you're mm-hmm. like, OK, <laughs> go, go gadget legs. Let's see what you got and like figure out how to like either run it out or tumble it out. And that's why I'm grateful for gymnastics and, and judo, yeah. because life's not about. You know, the biggest, the most important thing in life is not how fast you could run or how high you could jump, but how well you can bounce. And if you could come in hot and like the, the average human is just going to fold in half and like the spine's going to break and they're not going to walk away from this one. And you can come in and bounce and roll it out and then pop up all, hey, got this. Then you're going to continue on and learn to grow and um, pursue life um, to another level that you haven't right. been able to get to before. So I think take gymnastics, take judo, yeah. way to learn how to fall, take care of your body, invest in yourself as the best thing you can do in your life. Like, you know, um, because yourself is what you're going to get. You know, I want those yeah. shoes. Yeah, those are neat. So what about yourself? What about your body? Like, that's why people go to college and invest in their brain. You know, take them far in life, you know. And yeah. um, I just got lucky, ran into the right people at the right time. And all of a sudden, I'm like, learn how to skydive, which is what I always wanted to do. And then as soon as I start skydiving, it's like, oh, oh, my God, I'm excited to do this. You know, this is so interesting. I just want to put everything into it, you know. And um, and I did. I quit my job. I lived in a tent for three years and just got fully immersed in, in skydiving and parachute sports. And and now it's kind of all I want to do is promote that world because it just it just clicked the inner love for me and the passion. And I, I still, that's all I do. I've been doing it for years now. I started in, in 95 and, uh, you know, coming up on 25 years and, and I'm like, uh, that's all still I really think about, you know, like you're driving along, you're out in the desert. Oh, look at that. It'd be cool to land there. Oh, that'd be fun to fly by, you know? And, um, uh, yeah, I just, um, I'm all in, man. (laughs) I wonder what the moon would be like. I wonder what Mars would be like, you know. Yeah, the atmosphere is so thin. You'd have to get a big wing or maybe even a smaller wing, just more speed and figure out how to stall it, you know. Yeah. Well, they did. They either wouldn't have the the lunar, um, the Mars rover drop down. They did have, I believe, some canopies on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and they've got a drone. They're flying it around on a drone. Yeah. Rover's awesome. cruising around and like figuring out how to fly on Mars. And, um, that's just amazing. You know, it's just really cool yeah. to be able to do stuff like that. And, uh, and, and the fun thing is with skydiving, you can go to places like Eloy, Arizona and go skydive yeah. and throw a car out of an airplane and sit in it and get video of yourself falling in a car and like, woo, just driving along, you know, <laughs> seatbelts, put your arm out like mom used to do, you know, don't fall out. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then you get to a certain altitude. Okay, decision altitude. Do you want to land in this car? No. Let's get out of here. You know, five grand. That's usually your decision altitude. And uh, and get out of that thing. And the last guy out, usually the car flips and changes, you know, attitude and like whips up and boom, you go off the front bumper and your bell's ringing. And hopefully you don't have to depend on your Cypress, which is an automatic activation device. See, we've got technology like even if you get knocked unconscious skydiving. There's a way your parachute's going to deploy before you hit the ground and slow you down. You're probably not going to have a good landing because you're going to be sleeping, you know, and the parachute's probably going to want to go downwind and, oh, you get broken really bad. But you'll survive, you know. And um, there's so much technology that goes into these sports. And skydiving, you get two chances, you know. You've got two parachute systems. So if one opens and it's malfunctioning and you're like, this isn't going to land well, I'm out of here. You pull the cutaway handle, ching three ring risers go ring it's a really cool sound and then um and then um you got your reserve handle here peel the velcro punch and your backup parachute your emergency parachute which is packed by a certified rigger the faa so it's you know it's like it's packed perfectly dialed in um it still can have problems if you have bad body position you know you really need to have balance you know in the air and um it opens a little bit more firm more positive 
bang, you got your backup system. And even if your hands are um, incapacitated and you can't pull those handles, there's a little computer called an AAD or a Cypress automatic activation device that will um, has a cutter and it, psh, it fires the cutter and it will cut your um, closing loop so that your spring loaded psh, pilot sheet comes blinging off your back. And I mean, I wanted to learn how to Amazing. do that, so I'm like, "How do you do that? Can I can I watch you pack this reserve?" And my friend Taz, she's like, "No, you could pack the reserve, and I'll watch you and sign off your pack job, so you jump your own reserve pack job." And I'm like, "Wow, that's, that's cool!" Because I was wanted to learn, like, "What's next? How does that work? How does this work? How does that work?" You know, and pay attention, you'll learn a lot. And uh, Taz yeah. let me pack my own reserve and had a malfunction on it and jumped my own reserve pack job once, and it opened perfect, beautifully. You know, I was like. That was awesome. Totally works. <laughs> Got to put your trust in it, though, too. That's kind of the big thing, you know. Um, that's that's kind of the hugest thing, you know, is to learn the equipment that you're playing with, learn how it works, why it works, and how to use it the best and properly, mm -hmm. and then put all of your trust into it and become – make that piece of equipment an extension of your body. That's what, like, baseball players do. This bat is an extension of my body. I extend my arms mm -hmm. out and swing and boom, hit that ball. And, and if I put this much force into it and I hit it just underneath the midline and slice it in half, I could knock it at that angle and it'll fly out of the park and I'll get paid millions of dollars, you know, and, um, and then I can get whatever I want, like that Ferrari, you know, and, <laughs> right. you know? and, um, and that's the thing people are like, I think. I don't know if it's just nowadays or even when I was a kid, everyone was like, oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. I want that. Instead of that, think about like, how do I get that? Like, what are the yeah. steps? Because life doesn't come at you and you're not just going here, take this, go run, you know, take that Ferrari and send it into a pole. You know, you need to learn how to get there by taking baby steps. And that's the thing is as a baby, you really can't do anything except for eat, you know, and you're, we're, we're coddled and, and, and loved into a position where we can grow and people don't grow without love, you know? And if, if you're not in a good yeah. environment where your friends are cool and, um, and helping you learn and grow, then get new friends, dude. And you know, figure out how to get yourself to another level where and, and surround yourself with good people and good things happen. And, and, you know, and, Oh, I want to be a skydiver. So I'm going to go hang around skydivers and learn how that sport works, you know? And then, Oh, this guy might be a great skydiver, but not a nice person. So I can't hang out with him very, very long, but I can understand what he's doing. You know what I mean? So it's all these mm -hmm. decisions that you make in life. They're not just like, boom, you're there. It's a, million series of a million baby steps to get to that big picture and um and once you get to a place where you can understand and learn to grow then you're figuring out how to manipulate these baby steps to get to different areas and do different things and and i just happen to be in a place of skydiving and base jumping and parachute sports where i'm like what's possible to jump off of a cliff what's possible to jump out of an airplane can i land this kayak in the water can i land it on tall grass without flipping and you know breaking my back and um and that's the thing is i just trying to learn what's possible you know i've jumped skis um off of cliffs of airplanes out of airplanes didn't work out so well for me but off cliffs work fine and uh, you know and I learned how to how to do that but that became a, um, a reality by being a good skier you know I graduated college mm -hmm. and I moved to Squaw Valley and I I mean sorry Palisades Tahoe the name just changed and I lived there for 11 and a half years you know and I thought I'm gonna live here forever because I love this place pine tree smell the mountains you could get out and run and then then I fell in love and and my girlfriend at the time, and I'm moving to Chicago. I'm like, don't leave me. I'm going with you. And, uh, yeah, she's amazing. I lived in Chicago for you. I'm a small town kid. And living in Chicago was hard for me. It, I like, what is going on here? Nobody even looks each other in the eye, says hello, even gives a crap about you. You know, you're just like in their way and they're walking around you to get to wherever they need to be for lunch or whatever, you know, wherever it is they're going, you know. And I lived there and, and it was cool to like, it was a good learning experience. I mean, I don't think you should just settle into what you love the whole time. I think it's good to get out and explore new things. That's, I think, why being an Air Force brat, my dad, you know, moving around so many times, we moved to Okinawa, Japan. We moved to Athens, Greece, um, Alconbury, England. We moved all over the place and got to learn different cultures about different mm -hmm. ways different people live. And it's good to be worldly and see how the rest of the world lives so that you're not just kind of 
kicking back, eating, like if I lived, grew up in Idaho, oh yeah, potatoes, yeah, we just eat potatoes, that's it, potato, 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 look at my head, it looks like a potato, but I mean, you know, not that it does, but it kind of does, actually now, no hair, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I mean, get out and learn about other things and other ways, and, and that's the only real way to, to truly, like, grow, and, and, you know, they say, mm-hmm. like, what is it, act locally, but think globally, you know, and do what yep. you can for your own environment, but know what other environments do so that you know more about your own environment and can help grow that one into a cool place. And the biggest thing in life is to be happy, you know, and like find happiness and like, and, and I think that's with your expectations in life. Like don't set expectations that aren't achievable, set small goals. So you're constantly winning every day. I'm winning. I'm winning. I was asked my kids, did you win at school? Yes. What did you win? What did you win? I took a test and I got a really good grade. Yes. Keep doing that and you'll go far in life, you know? Yeah. I, 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 for me, I get easily overwhelmed when I'm trying to do things. So what I, I do is I break it down everything yep. into a series of small yep. steps. Yep. Because if, if I, if I look at this task, like even for like editing one of these videos, yep. like, you know, if I start going, I'm like, Jesus, there's well, there's a ton to do. So I'll be like, get channel art done. I get the channel art done. You know, first of all, download the videos, get the channel art done, create the project file. Then I have a series of small steps to set things up. And then I watch it, yep. review, and then I go through the posting. And like each thing that I have has a series of small steps. Yep. And then suddenly this thing that is daunting becomes manageable. Yep. And, and you know, say... say I want to create a large following for my show. Well, dude, don't think about that. You think about what can I make today? Yeah. Can I get an episode up today? Because yep. if you're if you're so out there and you're you're like, how do I grow this? How do I do this? You're gonna go nuts. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And then when I talk to people that do social media, they don't know. No yeah. one really knows how you you build something. You just yeah. Take it one step at a time. I think it's a, f- a series of different formulas that all come together. <clears throat> you know, yeah. like, like I, they didn't just like, here, Miles, we want you to be a Red Bull guy, you know. Sweet, thanks, bro. Appreciate it, you know. <laughs> it was because I, I um, lived in a tent and I figured out how parachutes work. And then I figured out what's possible with parachutes. Let's, can we do this? Can we do that? And I had like a, a really good um, group of friends. I mean, I was hanging out with, with uh, JT Holmes, um, Shane McConkey, you know, Cliff Ryder, guy with the coolest name in the world. And uh, <clears throat> all these really cool people rubbed off on me frank and bali i wouldn't even be here if it were, like where i'm at in life if it wasn't for frank and bali you know um i would still probably be skiing you know and working landscape construction and doing that kind of thing probably way still happy you know i i yeah I, i'm i'm a happy guy i've always been a happy kid you know like you can give me a bucket of mud and i'll be happy with that and go play with it and like oh we can make this watch it's starting to harden now you can shape it oh you can make clay, clay things you know or or dude it's just makes your skin feel so good isn't this nice i was trying to find right. the good and everything and my parents they would always ask me how was school fine it's great and then they go oh weren't you in the principal's office yeah, yeah yeah but that was just a little thing at lunchtime you know and uh <laughs> the rest of it was awesome i learned this i learned that you know so try to take the good things out of life and if you do yeah. that and you find the good then you're gonna be good and have good times and, and happy experiences you know and, and that kind of thing and um and don't think take things for granted i think that's the biggest thing in life is to appreciate what you have and like if you want yeah. other things appreciate the people that have them and like figure out what they did to get there and and like what was your process what was your steps how did you do that you yeah know? and then um that's what i did is i just lived in a tent and i just went and um, parachuted all day, every day. That's all I did. And I became really good at it. And then everyone started asking me questions about it. Like I'm the resident expert and I'm like, I'm not an expert, man. I'm a student to the game. You know, I'm just trying to figure this thing out and didn't get too big for my britches. And it's still not, you know, I'm still learning, still figuring this thing out. You know, I have a school miles, these base camp where I teach base jumping, but it evolves all the time as well. And it just keeps getting better and better. So I could learn those keywords to turn the light bulb on for you which is like, I learned that in college, you know, yeah, 
you get what you pay for. And I went to college and I paid for an education where um, I learned a few key factors where they're like, don't forget your three key points. You know, like if you're going to do an interview, boom, do this, say this, say that, you know, and, um, and then, and the biggest thing too is getting out and practicing and doing it, yeah, immersing yourself it. in it, because your body will react to different situations. And um, I'm a survivalist by nature. Put yourself into yeah. a situation. What's the best way to survive? And then once you know how to survive well, then you can start to learn how to thrive, and then get better and better at it. So it's just way yeah. more fun. Like I'm going out and I'm smacking that bear, and it's a good time now. You know, I'm not just doing it because I can get away with it. Now I'm doing it because it's awesome, and I'm figuring out different ways to do it. And here we are. Um, now the bear's enjoying it too. You know, and, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now yeah, we're all a, having you, fun. Yeah. We're, we're both, we're both, I studied judo as well. I'm a black belt in judo. Sweet. And so I studied, studied all, you know, and I mean, it's there's a couple of things. Yeah, right? <laughs> Almost and, green, man. I'm so close. Oh, that's still, still <laughs> savage, man. Stupid and like the, the thing, that, the thing that you learn when you start falling down, you know, but like you get back up. And then one of the things with, with, with judo is like well, the first year or two, you're just learning to move. Yeah. And, and like, you're just learning to like, you're stepping through and then suddenly it clicks and you start learning to dance, yep. you know, and, and, and that, that next level, that level of dancing, that level yeah. of, of, of starting to smack the bear creatively, yep. you know, you start feeling that, that, you know, you still respect the bear, yep. but you're like, it doesn't have to be, you know, scary. It doesn't have to yep. be, you know. And I never knew to shift my weight underneath somebody to get them to fall over yeah. you and that kind of thing. You know, when they tell you where to step, put your foot by his foot and then this foot passed and this foot comes back and kicks the legs in like an emotion. Yep. It doesn't hurt them, but it takes all their energy and use yeah. their energy to yours. You know, that kind of thing. Exactly. Once you learn how the body moves, the mechanics, then you're like, wow, the light bulb's going off. I understand this now. And it doesn't happen well, it, until it, you do it. And judo was like the gentle way. Like that was the name of judo was the gentle way. And like you watch like it doesn't look gentle at all. But the reality is, is that there is this flow like like you're not there's so much less effort. And that's one of the things that I learned so much in in judo was that you're constantly falling down. Yeah. But if you learn to use your momentum in your fall, you sure as heck can get back up yep. and you know, you can still, you can still use that. This person comes this way yeah. and the second they come this way, you know, you just use that momentum Duck under and pull yeah, exactly. And it's all circular. Sweep the leg. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cobra Kai. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> get him Johnny <laughs> yeah no but that's my judo teacher, my judo teacher <laughs> saved my life man he he told me that um when you fall he goes this role right here I don't know if it's called Ippon Sayonagi or Osotoguri I can't remember the names exactly yeah. but I remember those two names and I can't remember if that was the trip or the role and uh it was the role where you make a triangle and you roll yeah. down your arm across yep. your back to your leg, you know, and you you, yep. you get one leg out, one leg in, you know, and you come around and you hand here to protect yourself and like this hand slaps the mat to stop. Or instead of slapping the mat, you just keep it together and roll it again and again and again and again. He said he fell out of a car once that yep. flipped and he got flung out. And he said he saw the ground coming and he just did the roll and he went roll, 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 roll popped up and boom on his feet. And was fine. And I've done that on plenty of parachute landings. And thank you, Sensei, for that because, dude, you right. saved me. I've come in hot, you know, and um, and you're not allowed to crash on a demo, you know, skydiving demonstration. You're not allowed to crash on those. And, um, and uh, like, base jumping demos, you're coming in hot sometimes. And you're like, oh, I flared that one so bad. And I know I'm, I have to fall. Otherwise, I'm going to snap something. You know, I've snapped something before. It sucks. And I've come in so hot where, like, you know you need to roll. And I'm just going to peel off this. I'm going to roll it out. And you roll, roll, roll. And you bounce up. And you pop up to your feet. And your hands are up. You're like, hey. And everyone's like, oh, <laughs> golf clap. That was neat. That like, <laughs> I like how you did that gymnastics at the end of that, too. That was, that was special, you know. And they didn't know that. You didn't plan to do that, you know? Like, right. they're just like, yeah, as long as you play it off, like, I meant that. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> then they're like, wow, that was neat. How did you do that? And like, like one time I'm, I'm coming in on a kayak. I jump kayaks. It's a kayak. It's like you get in a kayak and you jump out of an airplane. Now it's a kayak. And I, awesome. I was coming in for landing and I, I forgot this, this, um, strap that I used to connect the front of the boat to my chest strap to lift it up so that once I'm under canopy, the wind isn't blowing it down and it's like making the canopy buff it and like, oh, you got to like use all abs to like get your nose or your boat up. And, and, uh, so I tied some rope on there and then it was too long or some string. And then, um, it was like parachute cord, but, um, not like super strong guy by any means. And then it was too long in the, in the aircraft. So I, I switched it up and tied a couple knots in it and a knots, a weak point in a rope. And, and when I came into land, there's these two dudes on those, those, um, what are those things called? The flyboards where you got a jet ski powering a fire hose that goes out of your skateboard that you're yeah, flying in the air. Well, there's yeah. two guys doing goalposts for me and I'm swooping it in, coming in faster than a speeding ticket right between them. And when I tapped the ground, Right before them, um, my little string rope broke, and poosh, the nose went down into the water, and it caught, and I front flipped through the risers, which is a trick I've always been wanting to do. It just, it just generically just, it just happened, and it's just like poosh, front flip through the risers in a kayak, came around. I'm, I'm probably doing like 40 to 50 miles an hour at the time. It's just like yanked me my abs hurt for a few days you know and like my neck was like a little whiplash but uh when i flipped through and i landed boom back on the boat and was like skip 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 across the water <laughs> and i i like stuck it and i was like yeah woo, <laughs> air guitar what's up party people you know and the camera guy comes over and they're like dude dude that was amazing and later in the interview they're all did you mean to do that and i never really answered their question you know i just said i've been wanting to do that for years and today was that day it finally happened you know <laughs> no i didn't mean to do it's that awesome. i just got i got lucky and that right there my friends is like the biggest secret to life is to be lucky yeah, you know, it's, it's way better to be lucky than good. You know, but did so you ever hear lucky. <laughs> that, that saying "failing forward"? You know, like like sometimes you fail. Oh, like yeah. sometimes, most times you, know, you fail. It, like eighty percent of the times you're going to fail. But so as honest. long as you're failing forward, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. all good. Yeah, because you know, like God knows, God knows, there are times that I have just just totally fucked something up. You know, yep. but as as long as you're moving in the right direction, it's all good, man. Yep, exactly, exactly. Now, if you could go back in time and give your 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 younger self some advice, what advice would you give your younger self? Wow, I would say past self, pay attention, do as your dad said, learn how to fly jets. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I, I I don't know. I would I would um, pursue a career in aviation more so like i mean i do have a career in aviation but it's kind of a cowboy career you know it's like skydiving and base jumping um i would get my um i would learn how to fly airplanes a lot younger because i think i have the touch for it you know um mm -hmm. i think you know i learned that at a young age my dad when i was eight here take the take the controls and like pull back okay you've just taken us off now aim it at like see this heading this is a compass like aim it at this keep it at that keep it at this altitude okay like that okay a little bit smoother on the controls you know and it just takes practice to do that kind of thing and i i, I wish i was um a pilot and i still do and i i'm still not pushing myself to do it because i'm kind of set in my ways it's kind of sad <laughs> well there's always there's always time man there's yeah time. yeah and and don't do that bike jump where like you set it up on bricks and the second time you hit it, the bricks all shifted. And when you hit it, the front tire is going to catch and you're going to go over the bars and you're going to jam your head in the ground. And you're going to have that crick in your neck the rest of your life. Don't do that one. I would say that. <laughs> but everything else, that, man, I'd go with I've it. got that, that one, that one motorcycle accident that I have that I feel it. I still feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I want a good quality of life. I think that's the biggest thing with our lives is have a quality life, you know? And if you hurt yourself, it kind of sucks, but then you're going to need to like retrain yourself to get even stronger than you were before so that your yeah. quality of life is back, you know? And, and, there, and I think being a PE major is kind of yeah. like was the best call that I made. And it was all about, you know, 
take care of your body and your body will take yeah. care of you. And if you have a good, strong body, then you'll have a good, strong mind as well. And then that's going to take you far in life to balance those two out and, um, and enjoy your life. Cause that's all you get, man. This is all you get. Right. Might as well enjoy it, you know, sit right. around in the, in the room all day. I mean, yeah, that's cool. What's, what's this room got to offer? I mean, I can learn about this. I can learn about that, you know, but like get out there and learn what the world is doing and you'll, you'll be a lot more happy when you come back to that room and you go, Oh man, I really appreciate that light switch a lot more because I know how it works and I learn how to put one of those together, you know? Right. Well, and I think <clears throat> we, <clears throat> we've gotten so used to sitting in houses and, and you know, our, our in they're comfortable and our increased Wi-Fi now has made it so that <clears throat> you get, you get all these things beamed into your house. But people, there was this, this study about like this thing that said that people are afraid to go out their own front door now. And, and it's like, it's gotten worse in the last two years. Hey, it's not for everybody. <clears throat> I'm just saying what it works for me. You know, everybody has yeah. their own thing and maybe it is good for some people to stay at home their whole lives and that kind of thing and just grow their brain. And like, you know, maybe they have an Oculus that makes them feel like they're doing the things that they need to be doing that kind of thing. And, um, but I'm just saying, if you want to, you know, if, if you have a way to stay aerobic and keep your heart in a shape to keep pumping and that yeah. kind of thing, you know, then you'll have a nice long life that you can enjoy. And, and, um, I think not everybody does have nice long lives. A lot of people get cut short. I've lost a lot of friends, but they had amazing lives, you know, and, um, and yeah. awesome times. And I think that's, you know, try to give yourself the best one, but you're right though. People are stuck in the way. And that's why I appreciate my mom for telling me, go outside and play. You know, right. yeah, I went out and broke some bones and got dirty and bloody and muddy and came home all a mess and sometimes in trouble. And, but, um, I learned a lot along the ways it's getting me this far in life and hopefully got a lot further to go, you know? Right. Well, Pay attention. I, I'm and great. I was, Remember one Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, Foghorn Leghorn. I always tell my son, now, boy, I'll say, boy, pay attention when I'm talking to you, boy. <laughs> Put that phone away for a second, will you? Can't even right. hear me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> right. Remember one summer, my mom my mom wanted us to <clears throat> get out of the house. She didn't, it was when video games had just come in, yep. like like, 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 like in, a, in, in a legit way. All night way, long. You, you know? stay up all night long and playing low. First runner, Nintendo, <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, dude, that was a great one. We, this was... This was Digging we the had uh, oh, no, the, the first soon. Nintendo. Oh, we were playing Super dead. Mario. Though, oh, yeah. Right? Super and Mario we got had me the Atari. I had the... An, yeah. Oh, right? Oh, it was awesome, man. Dun, 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 dun. No, that's Tetris. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's so great. But like at the same time, we were in there like five hours a day. My mom's like, you're getting outside and I'm putting you in sports classes. And she enrolled us in about 15 different sports classes and one of the things that was really in, important in that summer, I learned what I didn't like. Yeah. And I learned what I liked. Yeah. And so much of the what I didn't like was really important. I suck at tennis. Yeah. It's a fun sport, but I'm not good at it. Yeah. You know, not your jam. Not my jam. It, but yet, <laughs> I also took martial arts that summer, and I was like, "This is this is this is what you know. This is what makes me feel alive. I love this, man." Yep. And you know, and and I think that once you can figure out what it is that makes you tick yep. run towards it yeah run towards it exactly. don't look back yeah just dive Get in, in man, there man you... all the way yeah 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 and that's how <laughs> a comedian once said i can't remember whose name i wish i could remember to quote him he said find out the thing that it is that you don't do very well and then don't do that thing <laughs> <laughs> But it is. I mean, yeah. find out what it is that, that you love that in, in, enthralls you. And, you know, it might be, I love karate, but like, you're like a skinny old kid that like, you know, like, I, you know, karate's not your jam, son. Don't just do something else. Nope. Nope. That's what makes me want to wake up in the morning and go out and get after it. You know, that's why yep. I get out of bed is for karate. And then dude, stay with that. Definitely go after yep. it, you know, and you will learn to adapt. That's what the body does. It learns to adapt and evolve. And dude, now, you know, 
we're, we're walking, we're running, we're flying, you know, we're doing all kinds of right. things. People adapt to any situation that you throw themselves into if you're there long enough, you know, and that's the thing is you have to be there long enough to be able to adapt. So <laughs> learn how to stick around and survive in that area and then you'll learn how to thrive in it and like crush it, you know, and that's, and then you're right. just having way more fun and like, whoa, this is so much fun. Oh my God, let's keep doing it. This is awesome. And then, but, but, it, but once it gets old, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm burnt out on this thing. I don't even want to do it anymore. Well then go do something else. And then maybe you'll want yeah. to come back to it. You know, don't just do one thing, you know, don't just eat ice cream every day or, or don't just eat oatmeal. That's it. You know, like have a variety mm-hmm. of foods that like, this is my favorite and I'll have it like once or twice a week, you know, <clears throat> don't like eat it every day because then you won't appreciate it anymore. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I, I had this thing like. I got sick. I got really sick back in 2000. Coronavirus. That was what was going around. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I'm just 2007, it was I'm like sorry, swine flu. No, 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 for sure. It was it like the swine flu back then. I don't no, know. no. It, man, who knows, man? I, I, but <laughs> yeah. I got really sick from something. And like, it was like it went in and affected my, my heart and stuff. I recovered. But one of the weird things, the side effects from it, was that I developed these crazy food allergies. And so like... Yeah. Dude, I'm a, I'm a huge foodie and I loved eating everything. But after that time, I couldn't eat anything. Now, yeah. my diet consists of rice, beans, chicken breast, and then a host of vegetables. And I can eat some bread that's really limited. You know, like I make sure I get there's no extra ingredients That sounds like in a it. pretty good diet actually right there. It's actually really yeah. healthy. <laughs> really good. <laughs> it's really yeah. healthy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, like my family is like, dude, I don't know how you do that at every meal. And I was just like, but you know what the crazy thing is? When you don't have all that extra stuff, do you know the thing that just is like amazing for me? A really good loaf of bread. Yeah. Like a really good loaf of bread. I'll get it. Or just like a bottle of sparkling water. Like I don't need all of these wild foods. Like, yeah. you know, I just have my thing and then I just get this bread and I smell it. Yeah. And I, I, you know, and I savor it. And, and this is one of the things that I, I, I ride motorcycles, you know, and in, here in Vietnam, it's a motorcycle culture. Nice. One of the things that's so crazy about it is when you ride motorcycles, the thing that you don't get in cars is the smells. Yep. Like oh, you yeah. drive past a restaurant, you're like, yep. and that's, that's the thing that I love about my friends that do like extreme sports and stuff, because they're so much more present yep. in life yep. because they've, they've, they've learned to just be there when you're when you're probably and i'm not i've never gone skydiving and i definitely have to go when i come back to the states man i'm doing i'm gonna hit you up yeah but i don't think that i can be thinking about other stuff when i'm falling i think that you're you're you to to me at first not at first but the more you do it the more you get involved with it and like you do it a thousand times two thousand times ten thousand twenty thousand times then you're out there and you're flying around and you're like Oh crap! I left the dog in the car. I gotta get down there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But it's like, at first, you're just trying to survive, man. You know, you're just like, yeah. make sure you pay attention to how your altitude. What's my altitude? Where am I at? How do I get away from everybody so I can open my parachute safely? You're thinking of all the things that you need to think of to get to a place. But that's it. You make yourself like a checklist, like an airplane pilot does. Like they'll like kick the tires, check the fuel, check the wings, check the thing, you know, and you do yeah. this for everything. And for base jumping, when I learned how to base jump, I like really sort of paying attention in life. I didn't just like grab my like bike and go out and go, woo, boom, you know, I would be like, okay, I'm going to make sure my tires are good before I go out. I'm going to make sure, oh, I'm going to get up early. We're going to go at four in the morning because it's like that's how you get there early and the early bird gets the worm, you know? So at four in the morning, you're tired. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clothes on the ground next to my bed in order that I'm going to put them on so that I go, doom, 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 doom grab my thing grab my bike grab everything's in order and like and you you set yourself up for success by by planning ahead and getting these things lined up ducks in a row so that you're just like and you tick these boxes okay now i'm in the position where i'm going to learn and i figure out which boxes do i need to tick next to keep elevating that and going next level next level next level you know and you get to places that you don't even think were possible because you're so ready for the ones that you're at that you can see what to do to get to the next one. And you won't know that until you till you go out and you find out where that edge is. And to get, find out where that edge is, you have to figure out all these steps 
to build yourself up to get to that spot. And then you get to that spot and you're like, that's not the edge. It's way up there. There's, you can do so much more than that, you know, and, um, and pay attention in life and learn those baby steps and, and, and be methodical about how you do things. And next thing you know, you're going places, man. They, what's that book? It says, wherever you go, it's a Dr. Seuss book or something like that, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, like, the places, the places you'll, you'll go, right? you'll go places that kind of thing, go. you know, you'll learn yeah. how to hack and sack sacks or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like those, those Dr. Seuss books, books always, um, hit good notes with me when I was a kid. They're, right. they're, they're they help. Those are like good life lessons right there in those Dr. Seuss right? books, I think, for, for sure. sure man. Well, brother, this is this has been a, a master class and and so much, dude. I would, I feel like we're just scratching the surface. I would love to have you back on sometime though, right if you're on. open to I, it. Man. I'm all about it, dude. Totally. Right, right now, the awesome. fog's all set in. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna go. Actually, I gotta clean my room. That's what I hate the most. But I'm gonna do it. Right. I'm gonna do it like I'm the world champion room cleaner and try to right. win. You know. <laughs> Go to win. Now, that's what I do. When I when I clean, I have to come at it hard. Like, you know, like I'm like I'm getting like I have like all my tools and I'm like, yeah. it's time. Yeah. This this I will win. The this closet's the no hardest chance. part, man. Everything goes in there. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, just like get it away. Right, I gotta get in there and pick it all out. And I have to get rid of things and I'm a little bit of a hoarder. I don't want to, but like I'm trying to become right? more of a minimalist because then you stuff doesn't clutter, clutter you up and get in your way, and you can you can go grow a lot faster that way, you know. But uh, I got little memorabilia like I can't no no can't get rid of that that shirt. Yeah. It doesn't fit you anymore. It smells as bad. You know, I have memories. You know, see that right? hole. Oh, oh yeah. With you. <laughs> I'm with you on that man. I understand that. I, you're speaking my language right now. Uh...